Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. This is the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need a crypto price prediction, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if the content helps you, please drop a like. So, <laughs> How about this market, huh? Crypto was actually down before the payroll number. And remember, we discussed two days ago that when the Fed chairman met with the president, he told the president what was going to happen here. And the Fed and the president was like, I respect what the Fed has to do. I respect their independence. Well, their independence to do what? Well, tighten like there's no tomorrow. I mean, Zero Hedge was like, oh, the unemployment number, they're only going to add 150,000 jobs, recession imminent. Not only was the job number not 150,000, but it was like 390, and the expectation was 328, as in 1,000 jobs added. So the equity market Kool-Aid about the Fed not tightening. We talked about this two days ago and yesterday. Forget about it. Okay, the Fed has to do what they have to do to slow down demand, and that means wreck equities. So if they're going to wreck equities, then crypto is going to freak out before that, right? That's just the way it works, okay? The Fed is going on the war path, and that is not going to end until stonks are down, period. So that is your crypto payroll number update. Let's welcome who's on the stream. We have somebody coming in from India. Dishu, up late. Thank you. Flip Berger is here. Nathan Church from Idaho. Welcome. Chronic Carl. Yo. Arkansas, London. Routine Cheese is here. Welcome. Right. Adrian from Bulgaria. Right. Brazil is in the house. Dana from Jersey. Okay. Yes, you were first on the Notorious stream. All right, we have Sydney up late. Yes, I'm in blue today, as in black and blue, right? Getting punched in the nose, giving you a little variety from the usual red. By the way, somebody asked me how many red shirts I had. The answer is eight. They're all notorious Bill shirts. So just to clear that up, a little trivia. We have Bosnia here, Northampton, right? UK, London. All right, Corona, California, as usual, Israel, South Africa, welcome. Okay, what do I think of the correlation between oil prices and crypto? Okay, we did statistical work last year, oil up, Bitcoin down, using regression analysis and statistics. Okay, rule, thank you, hello, John Stewart, Houston is here, Poland, Right, Pat, Andre, there's something out there and it ain't no man. There's something out there. Okay, Celtics fans are happy. So are New York Rangers fans. Let's go Rangers. Okay, Detroit, the blue shirt is not a good sign. Arizona in here. Donald is, is uh, telling you to smash the like button. Please do that particularly if you watch it over the weekend, the goal is 1,000 likes. 1,000 likes. Do it. Do it. Bill, are New York miners about to dump their Bitcoin because of the mining ban in New York? Sir, let me put it to you this way. Everybody who thinks they're safe in Bitcoin is going to sell. 
They're going to be forced to sell. This has nothing to do with crypto. This has nothing to do with the future of crypto. It has nothing to do with that. It's good old fashioned margin call, liquidate the entire system. That's what happened in 1929, right? All the innovative creators of new speculative projects, all the people trading stocks on cruise ships in 1929 with no telephone, no mobile phone. How did they do that? <laughs> they traded stocks on cruise ships. The banks, the commercial banks, like the Bank of Central Illinois, had people secretly speculating on stocks in margin. They're going to liquidate the system. That includes the best stuff, everything. So it's not personal. It's not that I hate crypto. Somebody said it was a FUD master. I'm not a FUD master. I'm just telling you. Sometimes, right, the forest gets dry, lightning strikes, and you have a fire. It's not personal. It's just nature. So that, that's how I would answer that. Okay, recession Q4, recession after stocks blow up, right? Most likely the Fed's not going to let the economy just totally fall off a cliff. They'll let stocks blow up, let everybody get negative, and then they'll turn it around. South Africa, London, Alberta is here. Okay. All right. We have Palestine, Malta, Australia, Oklahoma, Queens, right? Sweden, Amsterdam, Romania, Texas, Singapore. Unknown Revolver says, when moon? You know what? I actually have an answer to that. If you want the Ethereum roadmap and I'm going full crystal ball by the, by like the, the day to day, week to week of how I think this thing is going to pan out, stay tuned, right? That's at the end of the market update. So if you want the Ethereum roadmap, all right, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Bubba says, keep the shirt red while I accumulate. All right. So we have a minor rebellion against the blue shirt. <laughs> Little do you know, it has like a giant skull on it <laughs> for black and blue. Joseph says, do we ever listen to Jamie Dimon? Well, Jamie Dimon makes a lot of money, but having a lot of money doesn't mean you know about crypto. However, Jamie Dimon probably does know what can happen in this market with equities and bonds. And these guys are not stupid. They're not. They may sound stupid when it comes to crypto, but these sophisticated players are probably getting ready for a mess. Also, these guys at the top, you know, they have lunch with guys at the Fed or they know guys who have lunch with guys at the Fed. Okay. We have Montreal here. We have somebody saying, don't listen to the Feds. We have Moro here. Okay, Rotin G says, pick the bottoms and something happens to your fingers. We have Estonia, Romania, Orlando, Kentucky. Wow, we got a lot of people here. Okay, Columbia, Ontario, Canada. All right. Now, face, face hack says, Bill, show us your short position. Dude, my short position is cash. Cash. As in off Coinbase cash, right? You can make money being short. You can also get smoked. You can be right about the market and lose money. Bear markets get everybody. Short sellers are like experts. My expertise is in advising you. So instead of spending time figuring out where to get short, I'm spending time figuring out how to advise you. So with that said, you are undoubtedly hitting the like button as I begin your market update. This weekend is last weekend. Last weekend, I said there should have been a debacle on Sunday night. So Sunday night, they kind of FOMO'd into my face. They were FOMOing it all day. Then the decline didn't start until the next day. This one, I have no idea why anybody would go home long crypto today, right? And then people are going to wake up, they're going to read the legacy press, okay? And they're going to go, this is in stocks. They're going to go, hold on a second. 
We thought it was a recession. We thought there were layoffs, but they added jobs. Okay, maybe maybe the number inside wasn't as good as it looked, but the number wasn't terrible. Everyone's like, oh, the number's going to be terrible. And now that the number's not terrible, they're going to be like, wait a minute. Didn't Powell just said that he's going to continue to tighten? And we've been buying this market as in stocks the whole time? What? And then poor crypto is just like, you know, crypto doesn't have time for the equity market's delusions. It doesn't. That's why it trades the way it does. We don't have time for delusions. So this weekend could wind up being kind of the disaster we expected last weekend for multiple reasons. The weekly close on Sunday, if it's down, in other words, if we close below where we opened, right? What, below where this market opened, that could be the trigger. Okay. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. I have the roadmap at the end of this. Now we need price predictions. People need downside targets. They need navigation, right? They need navigation and he needed it yesterday. Tokenmetrics.com. All right. Now, what I've done is I've gone back and I've looked at the history of our AI buy and sell signals. Now, markets, you know, they just love symmetry, right? They start at a level, they go up, and then they return to that level. So where were the original buy signals in some of the big coins based on our AI models? Because where's support? Where's support if there's a crash? Well, you have to look where no one's looking. Now, we're going to look where computers are looking. So I was like, all right, how about a human strategy to look where computers are looking? So Avalanche, $13.29, $13.29 as a downside target. So if you're long Avalanche, you're like, oh, this can't go any lower. Better recompute. Okay. Better recompute. Solana. Safe to say, I think people are freaking out about Solana. People like it for fundamental reasons. The blockchain guys like it. This is my question. Who is sponsoring these coins? In, in legacy, the word is sponsorship. Altcoins are speculative assets. They require a constant flow of money coming into the market to support prices. It's just a speculative asset. Even if it's a great one, it doesn't give you earnings. It doesn't give you interest. It doesn't give you a coupon like, like a legacy. Industry. It doesn't give you any of that. Money has to continually flow in. And if money doesn't flow in, then it's down only, no matter how good it is. So if you have people panicking, you know, if you just have people going, oh my God, I, I can't touch this thing. Like I want a DCA in, but I said that at 70. Okay. Support in Solana is at $35 and 20 cents. That's not support. That's where our AI first picked up on it. So if there's some sort of event that might hold. Okay. So for your disaster porn, uh, the original buy signal in Bitcoin, when this thing took off, when Michael Saylor drove it up, the original buy signal from October 14th, 2020 was 11,400. And I'll just present that without comment. Cause after all that could never happen. Right. Right. Sheeb. So the original buy signal in Sheeb, if you eliminate all the zeros, was around eight. I think it's now around 11. Okay. So if you think there can't be a give up trade in some of this highly speculative stuff, think again, right? What happens if you have retail capitulation? in all this speculative stuff. 
Back to Solana. So Solana stopped at 48, again, an AI point, right? The next AI point is 26. So if you thought I was a wild man with 33 or 35, this is the actual support is at 26. Overshoots happen. So if you come up with a point, be like, okay, this is a marker. This this is a reference point. Yeah, markets always overshoot. They overshoot. They overshoot on the upside and they overshoot on the downside. It's not FUD. It's forced liquidation, right? It's not a problem. It's panic, right? It's not crypto is no good. It's a margin call. They're going to liquidate the whole ecosystem. All the leverage, all the borrowing, all the hedge funds, everybody on leverage, out. Forcibly. It's happened before. It happened to the mortgage-backed security market in 2008. Everybody liquidated. Okay, optimism price prediction. $1.31 is support. If that holds, it can move to $1.49 in the event that, you know, every time I say it's going to go down on Sunday, they take it up, <laughs> right? If we have a, 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 a repeat of the nightmare. So $1.49 is possible. It's also possible that a one coin market develops, right? Everybody's after Luna 2.0 on Binance Smart Chain. They never learn in crypto. Um, now, if the whole thing falls apart, I would say the juicy buy is at a dollar. But you got to use a dollar 31 over the weekend as a reference point. Now, let's go to stocks, stocks, stonks. So, fascinating little fantasy they've had about the Fed not tightening, particularly since they told you they weren't, they weren't going to stop. They told you that. It's on my Twitter. Google Joe Biden meeting with Jay Powell. He, they told you what they were going to do. So they've had a little rally here. It was oversold. Okay, let me not hate on them. But if you look at ARC, the altcoins of the stock market, every time the Williams oscillator looks the way it does, okay, you get this like, I don't know, 10-day range or 10 period bar range, 10 bar range, sort of. And then ARC just psst, down on. Okay. I mean, if you think altcoins are going to get liquidated, this is just, this could vaporize. And this is already at its March 2020 low. So the cheap get cheaper. That's how this could work. S&P, SPY, 13 top on the 90 minute. You had a 13 bottom in late May. You got a huge rally off that. Huge. 13 bottom. And then this was like, this like total give up trade. And then boom, this went higher. 13 top, you know, FOMO because everyone's getting laid off when they're not. And I would imagine you're coming in on Monday and this is going to get wrecked. It's going to get wrecked. And crypto is going to move way before that. Crypto is going to go Sunday night. They're not going to wait for these guys to, uh, you know, read the legacy newspaper and uh, figure out that they have a problem. Because they have a problem. Fear. Okay. Fear. VIX. VIX keeps making lower lows and they keep hitting it and, oh, there's no problem. And the, the stochastics keep making higher lows. So all you need is fear to like rise sustainably. This is an 89 minute chart. So again, it's not a 24 hour market. So this will be good. Like today, Monday, all you need is one update in fear to trigger this huge rally. Right, they've been pushing fear down. Everything is okay. The Fed's gonna pause. Right, you know, hand me another beer. Okay, whatever. 
fear spikes, okay, you have a problem. You have a one day problem, you have a one week problem, or they puke it out until like June 14th. So it's more like a seven or eight day problem in equities. So if equities, I mean, if crypto was going down when equities are going to, were going up, what is going to happen to crypto if equities start going down? Now you might say, well, crypto could go up, but that, that might be later. Not now. I'll tell you why. So just so to sort of smash the stock market issue, um, this is SPY between now and 2008. So I know no one believes this, but they can really lose their mind on Monday. You know what I'm saying? Like they have been in this mode where they're like, we're safe and they're not. They're not. Speaking of safe, there's something wrong in the crypto financial system. I don't know how you would define that. You would say DeFi protocols, hedge funds, you know, stable coins are over collateralized with collapsing assets. I don't know. That's the problem. We don't know. We just don't know. So Ave at 107 is going to be the canary in the coal mine, right? Right now, Ave is not doing too bad, which is probably why crypto is not down 30%. Like that's why it's only down five. But if Ave gives out, which it may, Okay, if it gives out, then this market is done because that's a signal that there's something going on inside the crypto ecosystem where there's forced liquidation. I mean, ETH has a merge coming up and ETH trades like it has an 800 pound gorilla sitting on it. How do you explain that? There's a problem in the system. There's something out there and it ain't no man. Coinbase, news came out today that they're doing a hiring freeze. What's next? An account freeze, right? I mean, somebody that you don't think could ever blow up is going to blow up. And there's going to be more than one somebody, right? Like Luna was the first one. That was kind of a blockchain specific thing in terms of how the stable coin worked. So that's not my game. Sailor is massively leveraged and proud of it. So what other candidates are there? I don't know. But when Coinbase has to put out a press release saying that they're freezing hiring, why do they have to do that? I mean, isn't it obvious that everybody in crypto is, you know, got to get lean and mean? <laughs> why do you need to put a press release out? Say, you know what? We're not going to hire any more people. I'm like, okay, I already knew that. So why are you putting out a press release? Are you trying to tell us something? Is there a problem? There's something out there. We don't know what it is. It could be this. Williams Oscillator looks horrible. Thing rallies to resistance at 84. It pulled up short of support at 36. If this thing turns around and goes down, it's going through 36. Micro strategy. Man, I swear to God, this whole sit, this, this could take down the ecosystem. I mean, can you imagine if an ETH liquid, if DeFi gets liquidated and that kills ETH or that hurts ETH rather, rather, and then you turn around and say, oh, wow, they just liquidated ETH. I've been buying Bitcoin and I thought it was safe. What's up with that? I'm not safe. What? Whoosh. See, ya. um, see, ya. um, somebody's asking me about token metric specific stuff. Uh, I can't talk about that on, on the air, but you can email the support department and ask about that. They will answer your question. Um, but we do appreciate you supporting us as a token metrics customer. Now, micro strategy. Stops at a perfect resistance point at 272. Downside target, nine. Nine. Um, Bubba Smith says Ripple is still hiring. Yeah, probably because Ripple is a payment system. 
And if stable coins blow up, that payment network from Ripple Inc. is has got value. I don't know what uh, the deal is with XRP, but they do have a payment network. Okay. Um, support in Bitcoin is at 28,700. <clears throat> so you don't have to totally freak out if it's below, if it's above 28,700. 28,300 is another level we have. You know, I think what you have to start getting upset is if you see like below 28,700 on Sunday, right? Because today is a I'm safe in Bitcoin day. Whatever. That's fine. I, I would love it if everyone was safe in Bitcoin. But in these type of markets, I would not be a good analyst if I, if I didn't tell you that the road to ruin, right, it, it has got a sign on it that said, you know, stop here and you're safe. You're safe. It's safe to go back in the water, right? Cue the Jaws music. 28,000 and change. Glassnode, long-term hodler SOPR. Again, you have to take a day off from work to fully understand what these metrics mean. But if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, if this is a metric of hodler pain, long-term hodlers are starting to feel the heat. So if this thing takes out 28, they are going to start selling, hedging, whatever. People are starting to get emotional, right? They're starting to get emotional. I can feel it. I can feel it. Bitcoin futures funding rates. Okay, so over here on the right, you see a whole lot of green and not a lot of red, a little red late. So I, no one's panicking over here. Just as a point of information, this from July, that's people panicking. So it's like, you know, red for a month. That's panicking. This over here is I'm safe in Bitcoin. I'm safe in Bitcoin. I'm panicking. I'm safe in Bitcoin. I'm panicking. This is what it looks like if they panic, right? People with physical Bitcoin may have to start using derivatives to protect themselves. I mean, I get it that people don't want to sell physical Bitcoin. I totally understand that. Just the question is, how much pain can you tolerate on the price? Like if it's like, oh, I'm going to buy and then down. And then you're like, okay, I'll DCA, down. Okay, it spikes up. I'm in good shape. I don't have to worry. Down, down, down. That That's a serious, like, mind problem. And nobody is panicking. And that type of price action can trigger panic now or later. Okay, so here's the Bitcoin long-term roadmap. Um, 31,100, as it turned out, was a pretty robust resistance point. Okay. Sometimes support and resistance don't actually reveal themselves until later. But when you have that spike above 31 and then back down again, uh, it makes me think that, you know, 20 or 22 is possible and it's eventually going to wind up at 14. I mean, that's not today or next week. But I don't see any reason why you couldn't see 24 or 22 on an overshoot between now and July 4th. I mean, if this price action continues, it eventually just gives out, right? Down only for eight weeks in a row. Like I said, the hodlers can only take so much. So if resistance was at 31 and supports at 22 or 20, we visit the top? No? Okay, let's go visit the bottom. Okay, pounding this point home. This is wildly unpopular. Okay, ARK, the altcoins of the equity market. If you compare them to their July lows from last year, ARK is now 62% below its July low from last year. So the altcoins of the stock market, that's the top line here, have gotten destroyed. Okay. And then ETH, which is Web3, 
okay? Uh, in July of last year, it was at 1706. And if it goes down 62% like ARC, it should be at 1050. Think that number's ridiculous? Stay tuned. And unfortunately, if ARC gets crushed, the lower ARC goes, the longer ETH gets, the lower ETH target, the, the lower the ETH target goes. Let me say that again. So if ARC goes down, it just keeps lowering the downside target of ETH. These are the targets with a 10% equities rally over the last two weeks. What is this going to look like if stock market, if the stock market turns over? I mean, MicroStrategy and Bitcoin. MicroStrategy was at 472 in July of last year. It's now at 226. Down 52%. Last year in July, Bitcoin was at 29K. So if Bitcoin catches up to MicroStrategy, it's got to be at 19,000. What does this look like if MicroStrategy goes to 100? It's just this Excel spreadsheet, people. I'm not like, you know, this is not, this is not FUD. This is just like I'm trying to do a spreadsheet, right? So this is as of June 3rd. Okay, let's talk about ETH. Um, On-chain data is tough. It's, it's good, but it's tough. So ETH is all green. So ETH is down only with the derivatives funding rate positive. What does that mean? How, how can they just be buying ETH all the way down? I mean, I, it's hard to believe that that's what they're doing because it doesn't make sense. But then I was like, wait a minute. If I was a hedge fund and I wanted to make money, I'd be shorting Solana, shorting Avalanche, shorting any altcoin I could get my hands on, and I'd be long ETH against it. Because if, if Vitalik announces on Sunday night, right, you know, if there's a sequel to the to like the big pickle, Vitalik comes out and says, you know, we're, we're doing the merge on Monday. ETH's going to go parabolic. So you would want to be long ETH derivatives. So if you won on the derivative side, the long side of your trade, you could increase leverage if they did the merge. So basically, they're shorting the entire altcoin universe and they're long ETH derivatives against it. That's, that makes sense, unless they all start getting stopped out of ETH. You know, the stuff that they're short stops going down and ETH catches up and Bitcoin, right? So it's easy to say, oh, ha, 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 Avalanche could go to 13 and I'm short it, okay? But the stuff that you think you're safe in could wind up following Avalanche, so when I say everyone in bear markets loses money, you know, long ETH, short all the rest of the altcoins is probably working. And what happens if it stops working? What happens if it stops working? And people have to get out of the ETH long in the derivative space over a weekend when there's no liquidity or on Monday when stonks are vaporizing. So look, people, I get it. You're over it. You don't want to hear this. I understand that. No one wants to hear it, right? No one wants to hear it right up until you protect your capital, right up until it happens and you're okay. Better to sound the alarm, right? Wear a skull shirt, sound the alarm, get everybody out of the way. And then if I'm wrong, well, I work for a crypto company. We'll figure out how to get long later. Okay, this is the ETH roadmap. This is what you waited for. So we have a range in ETH, right? Uh, May, it peaked last year, 4,500. Then it went down to 1750. Then it decided to make a new high in December. And if you just draw this as a range, you'll see uh, using some clever GAN math that, you know, if you draw this range, you'll see that ETH spent 30 days outside the range when it made the new high. So, you know, back when it, in December, it spent roughly 30 days printing above that May high. Okay. So if the range is a box, you'd say, all right, markets love symmetry. 
it'll spend 30 days below the bottom of the range. What's the bottom of the range? I don't know, 1660. Okay. So here's the roadmap, right? ETH is going to spend 30 days below that box drawn in blue down here in the corner. So we start on June 4th or June 5th. ETH down only into a GAN point on June 14th. Like as in straight down, particularly if there's a negative, a red candle, a red weekly candle on Sunday. That, that would be my call. Red weekly candle on Sunday. It's not just down only, it's straight down. No big. Okay. Approximate target. I don't know. Uh, we have a thousand fifty. There are others, right? I don't think it goes that low initially. So down only. Okay. Then on the 14th, you start after everyone's bearish, short, whatever, liquidated, etc. It starts to go back up again into July 4th. And then July 4th hits and boom. Another violent down only into July 14th. Another GAN date. Then as in the 2014 scenario, after we go down only, uptick, down only, and everyone is out, the entire system is liquidated. What happens? Boom. It goes from 1050 to 2500 on a rope. So it's like, get out now, down, up, just painfully up, right? Slow summer, straight down, grind it up. Complete panic, massive reversal. Because again, it's about forced selling. Not just forced selling in ETH or Bitcoin like 2014. Forced selling, forced liquidation of the ecosystem. Who's getting a margin call? Everybody's getting a margin call. Except you, because you'll be in cash on the beach, right? And if I'm wrong, you can write me some you know, colorful mail. But you don't want any part of this. Because the volatility is going to be unmanageable. Now, if you're a cowboy short seller, you're a professional trader, this is the roadmap, right? June 4th, June 14th, down only. June 14th to July 5th, kind of like up only with people trying to get short and getting stopped out all along the way. So it goes down and then everyone wants to get short and it does nothing but go up. Then on July 4th, something happens to stocks, boom. Down only, 1050. Okay, 1050 is ridiculous, right? It could never happen, right? I made it all up, right? 1050 shows up as a support point on our AI charts. So uh, I didn't label all the levels, but you know, June 4th to June 14th could be to 1350. That's another one of our points, it's not labeled, but it's on there, 1350. So 1752, 1350, grind back to 1556, 1566, 1050. Crash. Everyone out. And then it just goes the other way. And then I don't know. We worry about Rectember later. I, I can't, I can't crystal ball it. All I know is down, grind, down, up. That's the call. And that's the market update. Okay. Now let's just uh, figure out what we're going to do here and see what's going on in the chat. Okay. Crypto crazy says you have to plan for this thing going up and down. That's correct. Do I have a Bitcoin roadmap? Um, not, not as specific as that. Right. The, the Bitcoin roadmap um, was done off 2014. I have to, I, I'm looking for it right now. So the Bitcoin roadmap 
from 2014 went something like this. It was like, okay, I have it here. Okay, so this is the Bitcoin roadmap. All right, it, it's, I don't want to blow it up full screen because I'll lose my place. So the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin roadmap was, okay, down six days in a row. So the blue was 2014. The white is today. This is weekly. So this is where I got the original idea of, you know, kind of like down hard, right? Up over the next four or five weeks and then down. Okay. Except what I did was I adopted it. I just, I took down, up, down kind of thing. And I said, okay, somewhere in here, there's going to be an epic squeeze. So I said, all right, you're going to go down more than you think. Then you're going to go up more than you think. Then you're going to go down more than you think. And I just took that idea and I applied it with GAN dates between now and July 4th. So in other words, welcome to technical analysis. I freestyled it. Right with Bitcoin, it's probably 28 to 22, right? Because everybody's going to buy in front of 20, 28, 22, 24, 18, or 14. I'm guessing 18. I don't think there's a case. I don't think there's a case for anything below 18 in Bitcoin, to be honest. I mean, I can draw stuff, but I don't think anybody would believe it. Let's put it that way. Okay. So weird how many people don't hit the like button. Well, I completely agree. Hey, folks, listen, on YouTube, there's a lot of noise. Who's telling you where it's going? Who's keeping you out of the way? Who's telling you what you need to know? And who's telling you what you want to hear? I could tell you what you want to hear. I probably get 2,000 likes. I'll tell you what you want to hear, like on July 14th, when it's time for the thing to go up. Let's hit the like button in advance. All right. Okay. Somebody says, hope BTC pumps one more time before the big dump. I think it did that already uh, last weekend, but we'll see if they have a repeat. Okay. Biden says Bitcoin's carbon footprint is too high and they're going to change that. Excellent point. Excellent point, right? You got to be careful of some public official saying something negative about crypto. Let me ask you a question. What happens at Jerome Powell's next press conference if some reporter asks him about UST, aka the phony baloney dollar that people got absolutely wrecked it. What do you think Jerome Powell's going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't care about that. It's just the dollar. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got to watch out for the stuff that no one thinks is coming, right? So Fed fantasy number one is they're going to stop hiking rates. I went to a restaurant last night. They say, oh, we have Wagyu beef from uh, uh, somewhere in Texas, uh, a couple, uh, you know, 100 miles away, 17 ounce steak, $200. I was like, oh my God. If I, if I could get short on my phone, I would. <laughs> right? So Fed fantasy number one is they're going to stop tightening until the equity market's completely wrecked. Fed fantasy number two is that they're not going to say anything about Luna. They're not going to say anything about UST. UST. The dollar. Poof. And they're not going to say anything about it. And no one's going to ask them about it either, right? Do you think Coinbase is going to have serious financial problems? Um, I don't know. Uh, but I, I do know that 
you have to be careful of liquidity risk, right? In other words, an exchange or an entity doesn't have to have serious financial problems to have serious operational problems. In other words, the question about Coinbase is what happens if their systems go down and they can't get them back up? What happens? What happens? That's the question, Coinbase. Sorry about the interruption. What happens, right? What happens if you go to sell and you can't sell? And I think if you're going to buy, if you're going to play the catch the falling knife game around uh, that GAN date on, on June 14th, the orders already have to be in and they probably have to be in at more than one exchange. So the question about Coinbase may not be about their financials, Although, you know, their press release today smells bad. Okay. What, what is concerning me is their ability to provide retail liquidity. That's what you have to be worried about. Godzilla-sized black swan in the near horizon. Or the black swan in crypto is already in motion. That's why ETH is down only. AB says, dump the market, we can rebuild. Exactly. Exactly. Everyone's like, oh, it's crypto winner. Okay. So the headline for today is it's crypto winner because they need an explanation for download. People, it's not a winter. It's like a, it's like a tornado, right? Texas tornado. What does a tornado do? Well, let's just, you know, everybody goes in the basement right? Go in the shelter. The tornado comes through, you know, takes everything away, rips the foundation off the buildings. There's nothing left but cement, sl cement slabs. And then the people come out from the shelter and rebuild the town. It happened in a place called Gerald in Texas. It was an F5 tornado a long time ago. It's like nothing but foundation slabs, right? Everyone comes out of the shelter, rebuilds the town. How long does that take? I don't know. It doesn't take 18 months because it's digital. It's digital. You know, you just margin call, you force sell everybody, everyone's out. And then who's, who's there to come back in? Well, how about the market update listeners who have been in the storm shelter? You come out and go, oh, wow, look at this. Bitcoin at 14K, give me some of that. ETH at, I don't know, whatever it's at. Cool. Solana, long-term, great. It's a tornado. All right. What happens if Tether blows up? All right. You know what? That's not the, that's not the question. It's a good question, but that's not the question. The question is, what happens if there's a massive blow up in the European bond market? Because what's everyone really worried about when it comes to Tether, right? What people are worried about is the assets that they have that support that support Tether, okay? So, you know, I, they say it's transparent. I don't know. That's just not, that's not my deal, okay? But I will tell you this, okay? Interest rates up, bonds down, right? So... Stocks and crypto are trading horribly. And here is the yield on the German two-year note. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, this is up only. It started at negative 0.82. So that means you gave someone money and instead of giving interest, you had to pay them almost 1% for them to hold your money. You paid the German government to hold your money. And it was that way for a long time. Now, oh wait, we've changed our mind. Now, we not only are not doing that anymore, but we want you to pay us 66 basis points. This measure is up only, okay? German 10-year note yields up only. Interest rates 
Okay, stock market down, U.S. 10-year note bonds, 10-year uh, note interest rates. Not up only, but still up. Now, that may change if stocks go down a lot, but everyone's asking about Tether and no one's asking about Europe. And I get it. The Tether question is a good question. Okay. Okay. Somebody is asking about Ike Finance. Okay. okay. I don't have data on that. Okay. I can pass that along to our token metrics research team. Um, they, they do things with like pre-sales. So I can't analyze something if I don't have a chart, but I can pass that along. Okay. Grayscale Bitcoin chart. Absolutely. And we're going to go through, we're going to try to get through, you know, we're going to try to do like the market update within the market update, check the DeMarc work and maybe even look at uh, some of what's going on on token metrics, right? Some of the old coin movements that I think are interesting. Okay. So Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, you know, it's like looking at the four hour chart. You always got to be careful. I know it's probably hard to see on TV, but you got to be careful when you get these oscillators near zero. This is, I'm not uh, sure. Hey, got it. All right. You got to be careful with GBTC, right? When you get these oscillators near zero. Okay. I mean, sometimes it's almost like perfect that it just vaporizes, right? I mean, down only into June 14th, starting like now. <laughs> would there ever be a safe time where Binance, U would, I said, would there ever be a time where Binance USD would not be safe? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, we picked up something in our token metrics spreadsheet that I asked our analyst about. So this is your on the fly altcoin overtime. Okay, so we're, we're watching stuff that our AI is picking up on. One thing it's picking up on is wrapped Binance coin. And I'm like, why is everybody after the Binance stable coin? Well, my analyst said, because everybody's after Luna 2.0. So everybody that got hurt in Luna 1.0 is trying to get it all back buying Luna 2.0. Trading angry, trading desperate, it doesn't work. And it's incredible that the speculative fires within crypto, they just won't die, right? Like one of the things on the list, baby Dogecoin. All right, so token metrics, I'm not going to argue with baby Dogecoin. It's at resistance. But the whole market's going down. So maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. The token metrics grade has skyrocketed. So, I mean, maybe baby Dogecoin is going to move. I, God bless them. Right? I mean, I guess if they take out resistance, right? My job at token metrics has to do with predicting the markets, not questioning what our computers are doing. It's just that, you know, I would want to see baby Dogecoin build upside momentum. Now, that said, uh, the thing I find more interesting, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, there's an Alluvium land sale going on. And the gods on chained token metrics grade 
continues to make new highs. And God's Unchained really hasn't done anything. So if this is up, if this is like one, uh, let me see, I can draw this maybe. Okay, so if there's something going on fundamentally in Illuvium, you know, it would be sort of funny if our AI found something like this, where I don't know, maybe God's Unchained or maybe this Illuvium land sale or, I mean, there, there is stuff going up in the market. I mean, seriously, I mean, like joke out of baby doge, but, you know, there's always a bull market somewhere. And the only way you're going to find it is on token metrics. I'm going to be straight with you. The only way you're going to find the future of crypto is on token metrics. You got to follow the AI and how the grades change. So the analyst is looking at the grade change in yellow. So Golem went up, the grade went up 40%. It's still below 80, right? Baby Doge is at 85. <laughs> that's, that's supposed to be like the momentum bull market zone. I don't know, man, more power to him. God's Unchanged is at 75. Wrapped Binance Coin is at 76, but they're after that because they're after Terra Luna. So for every like one smart thing this market does, it does two dumb things. Okay, but like I said, the only way you're going to find what works is token metrics, right? I mean, show me something in this market where you can like research the future now while they're killing this thing. Okay, okay, so let's go to DeMarc. Let me share this chart and we'll just like start road mapping stuff as best we can. Okay, so let's, let's, Let's get into Cardano. Okay, let's go to a 90-minute chart. Now, I looked on token metrics and I looked at where the buy signal first came from in Cardano, and I can't even say it. Our AI picked it up so early that I don't even know that that level is a credible target. Now, what I do know is that there's really good support at 47 cents. Okay, this looks like wave one, down, wave two, retracement to 38%, 38% retracement, right? Failed rally, and then there's going to be a low below 53 cents. So if this thing gets hammered, you're probably looking at 47 cents as being decent support. Okay, Cardano on the weekly Okay, the best support points are, okay, the support points are 49 cents and 15 cents, and the AI picked it up below that. And I'm not even going to show it. You're going to have to get your own subscription. I'm not going to say it on the air. Absolutely not. Okay. Okay, Realist Wizard said, tell them why they are shaking us all out. Okay, no one is shaking you out on purpose. The system is being liquidated and you're in a rowboat in a giant ocean that's, that's going through like a storm. You're in a rowboat in a hurricane. Hurricanes, tornadoes, natural phenomena. All you can do is get to safety. Can we please check VeChain? Of course. Okay. Let's do Polkadot. Is there any hope in Polkadot? I'm going to a Web3 conference. Nobody's talking about Polkadot. I don't know. I guess, even if I like it, you know, the, the, when it first came out, the high on Polkadot, I believe was 689. And then it, when it broke out, it had to take out that level. So maybe they have to take it down to 689. Okay. Let's actually get V chain going on token metrics. To be honest with you, that's probably the best way to figure out like wh where the buy signals actually came from. 
Like where, where, where did V chain pop up for the first time in the mind of the AI? Right. And this is, I mean, I'm going to look, I'm going to check DeMarc, but in this stuff that's been down only, So VeChain, I have the original signal was 0.011 back on November 2020. So where would that put VeChain now versus where it is? Okay, so VeChain is in the 0.03 area and there is DeMarc support at 0.003. So... You know, that's heartbreaking because I thought VeChain was a really cool solution. But as you can see here on the weekly chart, you know, we're at a seven. That means two more down weeks. You'll probably get a 13 bottom. But dude, where's the bottom? Like, how do you, how do you locate this? In other words, we can do the AI support levels in like the bigger coins and we can do them in VeChain. But guys, if people panic, right? If people panic, what, what's going to happen? Right. I mean, again, this whole crypto down move has been occurring with equities, uh, you know, enjoying a 10% rally in some umbrella drinks. I mean, uh, Cosmos, if I got this right, Cosmos, I have DeMarc support at 496. So I'm not necessarily saying it's going to 496, but I'm saying to you, like, that's support. That that's that's support. Now let's just check it over here at Token Metrics. See where the AI first picked up on it. See, now this is scary, right? Okay, so the original buy signal, the most recent buy signal in Cosmos was 1294. Okay, so that was the 2021 buy signal before it ran up to 40. Now, the original, original buy signal was at five. Cosmos currently at nine. So this AI metric where we go back to the original buy signal in a coin off token metrics. If you don't have the GAN work, uh, I'm sorry, if you don't have the DeMarc work, this is useful. Bill, what should we get short and when? Give us some... <laughs> Give us some sheepdog gems. Need a new wife. Okay. So I also have the when girlfriend problem. We have to keep most of that off the blockchain. Um, telling people what to get short is a recipe for ruin. First of all, it's investment advice. I can't provide that. Now, if we're going to talk about DeFi... Right. If there's a problem in the system, there's a problem in DeFi. So if I go back over here to trading view, right. And I type in DeFi perp. Again, I'm not advocating getting short DeFi perp, but this does look like bowling ball thrown out of a window with the Williams oscillators effectively confirming bowling ball out of a window, right? I mean, these are the big DeFi coins and they have done nothing. They, I mean, just like no uptick, nothing. Just this looks like Bitcoin from uh, 2018. Down, sits at 6K, loses half of its value in four weeks. It's not going to take four weeks. It's not. It's going to take two.
think back then it was six weeks. Ape, I don't think I can get on token metrics because I don't think I have the data. I don't think I have enough data. Somebody was asking about Ape coin yesterday. Okay, I'm waiting for the 90 minute DeMarc to come up. Okay. All right, so this does not look terrible, right? There's a 13 bottom, it bounced, it retested it. There's a nine bottom. I think what you have to be careful of in this is the failed route, right? So Ape coin should go up. Okay, what happens if it doesn't? So there's good support in Ape around 609. So good to mark support there. Again, beware the failed route. Now, if this comes back to being a one coin market, great. Okay. Be careful with stuff like this if the rally fails. Okay. X DeFi. Um, 17, 17 and a half cents is support, right? In other words, I can give you all kinds of predictions. I gave you the ETH roadmap. I'm assuming this is down only. If there's a negative weekly close, you want to be looking for support. Okay. Let's go to token metrics for X DeFi. Okay, so I'm checking the maximum scale that we have and it's it's off my chart. It's off my chart. Can I do waves? Okay, checking waves to see what's going on. Okay, so the original buy signal was at $2.95 in 2020. The recent low in waves was $4. So it never quite got to, you know, it never quite went home to mama, right? Let's check the trading view chart to see what it looks like. Okay. So there's volume on this, right? There's volume coming in here. Now, I don't know if that's people selling the uptick. Okay. The token metrics grade has not moved. So, you know, a lot of times if it's really going to go up, the grade will spike, you know, don't get caught in another Luna where the, you know, it's the mountain formation. The grade goes up. That's the yellow line. The grade crashes and it never recovers. So don't play around with this if the grade doesn't recover, right? It looks cheap, but the cheap can get cheaper, unfortunately. Okay, Rune. Because again, even though like this, oh my God. You know, I thought DeFi was like the future of finance and they're probably going to have to wind up building. They're going to probably have to build it on another chain like Bitcoin. I know Rune wanted to do, do cross chain DeFi, but you know, this thing mooned, it went to 12. I was like, wow, that's great. But then it started to come off. So two lessons from this one, after you get the moonshot, it does not pay to buy the dip. Like Monero does not pay to buy the dip. Um, that's Monero as in what's going on right now. I don't know. November 7th, 20, 
20, 60 cents was where Roan started from. It's now at 290. Uh, I, I just think, you know, I just think this is an environment where you want to start looking at Okay. Okay. So chain link. No, that's not chain link. This is chain link. Okay. So I'll go over here while that loads and load chain link. Okay, Chainlink's got resistance at 690 and support at 644. Okay, let's see what's on token metrics for Chainlink. You know, because we're getting to a point now where if this thing goes down over the weekend, like the, the big question is where's support? And the question is when the selling stops or where no one's looking, right? The original, the original signal, the most recent signal was 14 for chain link. Okay. The signal way back when, like when, like right after COVID, in chain link was 323. So what does the world look like if chain link went back like arc? It went back to what it, it started. Okay, GMT. I don't know. I have supported 98 cents. I have supported 98 cents. So they washed it out and now people are trying to buy the dip. Work out to earn is a noble cause. But again, if everyone panics, what happens? So speaking of panicking, let's just check to see where this market is one more time. Okay. So ARC is down 5%. S&P is only down 1.5%. That's actually what crypto's got going for it right now. Because if the stock market gave out, crypto would just go, right? Um, you know, ETH is kind of down 4%, right? Avalanche and Solana are both down 7%. So this strategy that they're doing where they're selling Avalanche and Solana and being long ETH futures against it, they're going to do that until it doesn't work anymore. Until Avalanche goes to 13 Um you know, and Solana goes to 26, right? And what does the world look like with those protocols at those levels? Okay. Okay, yes. Tron does have a good token metrics grade. And the question is, you know, if you want to be long something, for God's sakes, Make sure it has a good token metrics grade. The grade went down, but it came back. Now, there's two ways to look at this. One, something fundamentally is brewing. Something is brewing on a fundamental basis. Right? Because I can't really draw anything in Tron. Well, maybe I can Okay, so Tron has got a big point right around this eight cent level. Okay, it's like 0.086 maybe, right? So that's Tron. 
So, you know, Tron has been doing this gap up, gap down, and then it seems like, you know, it's making higher lows. All right. But again, the TM grade's good now. That's fine. You want to stay with it? That's fine. You better be checking the TM grade over the weekend and on Monday, right? Because, you know, if equities don't give out, this is fine. But if it's, you know, if the grade changes, you better be on top of that, right? Somebody said Tron stablecoin, but that's possible. The AI smells something going on on a fundamental basis. I completely agree that that... You know, that, that's why I'm kind of like, you know, just follow the token metric signals uh, on that. I'm going to do one last thing. Someone's asking about Litecoin. Okay. And again, I, I think this is something where we got to go back to the, the original signals. Okay. I don't know. It looks like the original buy signal in Litecoin was at 47. Currently trading at 64. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll end where we started. Okay. Somebody's asking for Avalanche. This is a good example of uh, it can't go any lower, right? Okay, so if we look at, $13.42 was the level in Avalanche where our AI first liked it. That was the rocket takeoff point in Avalanche. So if it, started somewhere and it went up and it overshot on the upside it can go back to that point and overshoot to the downside so if i didn't have this chart from token metrics i couldn't tell you avalanche is going to 13 because you would call me fud master right but i'm not telling you any fud i'm just telling you that the first buy signal was at 13 and that if the market just goes home to mama, that's where they started from. All right. Uh, someone's asking for near. Okay, the first buy signal in near was August 2nd of last year at 248. Now, can it go down there? I don't know. But if everything is going back to where it started, these are the levels that you got to start coming up with. You got to start looking <clears throat> for levels that people can't see. Right? In other words, in some ways, you know, relative to like the huge channels, this channel is relatively, you know, I don't know. Can I use the term? It's like a close circle, right? It's like anywhere between five and 10,000 people. Thank you all for tuning in, right? So we are going to look at support or we are going to look at price targets that no one else has, which means they have a shot at working, especially since we're using AI. So if you need to know where your coin first started, that would be the answer. That would be the answer. The answer is wherever it is on token metrics. Now, if it doesn't have a lot of price data, it has to have been around probably for all of last year in order to give you a really good signal. Okay. So friends, 
We'll see you on Twitter over the weekend. All right. Let's go over the plan. The plan is if there's a weekly close, let me get the level so I can tell you what it is. Okay. If there is a weekly close in ETH, Okay, if there is a weekly close in ETH below 1813, and if there is a weekly close in Bitcoin below 29,468, it's right there right now. So if you got a negative close for the week, a down close in ETH, and a down close in Bitcoin, this is what you're looking at. Okay? Down only right into June 14th. That's a GAN date. Then a slow grinding up move into July 4th. And then complete liquidation of the system into July 14th. Another GAN date. So 6-4, six, 6-14, four, six, down. 6-14, six, 7-5, up-ish. 7-5 to 7-14, down. Not investment advice. I'm not a swami. That's a roadmap, right? So you can manage your PL. The most important thing is if there's a, a down weekly candle for this week, you got two things nine weeks in a row down and a failed rally. Okay. It's got 1929 written all over it. And I don't want anybody to get caught in that at all. So Sunday night, come home from the beach early. Come home from the pool early. Make sure you check the weekly close. That's the market update. That's the weekend chart roadmap. I will see you on Monday.